Hi everyone, welcome to the Azure AD webinar series. I'm Ame Sankhe and I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Identity Engineering team. Hi, and I'm Sean Bishop. I'm also the program manager in the Microsoft Identity team. Great. So in this webinar, we'll be talking about passwordless authentication. In particular, we will first begin by making the case for strong authentication and understand why we at Microsoft are so excited about going passwordless. Next, we will jump into the journey to passwordless, where we look at different passwordless options available to you, along with some cool demos. We will also be sharing a roadmap that you can use to plan passwordless journey for your organizations. Finally, we'll be sharing a list of resources that will be available to you to help you move towards passwordless. All right then, let's jump into our very first section, the case for strong authentication. And before we dive deeper, let's take a moment to understand the problem with passwords. End users hate passwords. They hate them because alphanumeric passwords are hard for humans to remember. And on mobile devices, entering passwords is almost impossible. How many times have you tried to enter a complex password on your phone and just failed? But it's not just end users. IT folks hate passwords too. Look at these three troubling statistics that show you why passwords are bad and why you should go passwordless. Security incidents are increasing day by day, year by year. It's the new battlefield, and that's becoming a big problem for enterprises. The second statistics is around breaches. For the attacks that result into successful hack, 81% of those leverage passwords. And since most of those passwords are used again and again, when one password gets compromised, most accounts get compromised. This is the number one problem in IT today. Lastly, it's also a cost problem. For enterprise IT departments, nothing costs more than password support and maintenance. It's a common practice for IT to attempt to decrease the password risk by employing strong password complexity and demanding more frequent password changes. However, these tactics drive up IT help desk costs, which leads to poor user experiences related to password reset requirements. So it's not only a security problem and a user problem, but at the end of the day, it also costs money to enterprises. I think it's fair to say that we all agree that nobody really likes passwords. What do you say, Sean? Well, I mean, I'd say that's mostly true, but not everybody hates passwords. In fact, some people quite like passwords a lot. The attackers that we're worried about, that we've been talking about, the reason why we're having this webinar to talk about going passwordless is because attackers really like passwords because they're easy to compromise, as you've just discussed. So we're going to talk about things that you can do to hamper those plans that the attackers have and help you protect your organizations. So the first thing that organizations can do to protect themselves against attackers is enable multi-factor authentication. It's way better than using passwords alone. Although it's not a perfect solution, it does have some ease of use challenges for your end users. So as we look at the next slide here, many users don't like to use multi-factor authentication because of the extra friction that they have to use in addition to their password. But it is 100 times more secure than using a password alone. But to help with the end user challenges, we have a number of options that they can select so they can use the option that seems best for them, that's easiest for them to use. The first option, which we highly recommend for Microsoft, is using the Microsoft Authenticator app. When using the app, you can either receive a, a push notification after you're, you have entered your username and password, and then approve the push notification. Or you can open up the app and use a one-time passcode that displays in the app and changes every 30 seconds. A second option is to receive a phone call, and you can receive that call to your mobile phone or to an office phone. It's the phone that you have in your possession. And then the third option is to receive a text message that also that contains a one-time passcode that the user can use to complete that second factor of authentication. Now, so as we look at the options for your users, we really want to find a balance between what's convenient for them and what provides the best security. So as we've talked about earlier, passwords alone, they may be convenient for your end users. We place that right in the middle of the convenience scale. 
because while they're easy to use in most cases, that's if the user remembers their password. If they forget their password, then that's a whole nother challenge where they need to do a form of self-service password reset, or they need to contact the help desk. They need to do something to retrieve that password. So it's only easy to use if they can remember it. But as we've talked about through the presentation, it's low on the security scale. So then once we add in multi-factor authentication, that certainly adds in the security, but it decreases the convenience aspect. So what we really want to strive for is to be in the top right quadrant here, where we both have high security and high convenience. And that's where the passwordless journey comes into play. Amey, why don't you talk to us and get us started on, on how to start this passwordless journey? So Sean just alluded to how we are in search of a passwordless world that is super convenient and also offers high security. And in this section, you will learn how Microsoft is approaching passwordless strategy. These four steps to password freedom provides an overall view of how Microsoft envisions the road to eliminating passwords. Now, before you move from passwords, you need something to replace them. Therefore, our first step was to provide you with different options that have strong security and good user experience so that you can finally move away from passwords. Our second step was to reduce the user visible surface area for passwords. We really want users to get out of the habit of using passwords and switch to passwordless technologies instead. This is where integrations like single sign-on become really important because instead of being prompted for credentials, users can seamlessly sign into an app or service without being prompted for credentials at all. If you don't need to use your password, you will use your password less. In cases where authentication is necessary, that's when our passwordless technologies come into play. The third step is to transition into passwordless deployment so that you never have to deal with the frustrating experience of using passwords in your authentication workflows. This is where we are at today. And that's where we will be able to achieve the end user promise. Because although the password still exists, the user never has to deal with the password in their workflows. The final step is to achieve our security promise. And that is where we need to eliminate passwords from identity altogether. That way, not only the user is not using the password, the password no longer exists. Hackers cannot fish passwords if they don't exist. So we have this ambitious dream where once organizations move to passwordless solutions, we can press the big red button and eliminate passwords altogether. Now I want to emphasize that the road to being passwordless is a journey and the duration of that journey varies for each organization. It is important for IT decision makers to understand the criteria influencing the length of that journey. Therefore, we'll, we will be also covering some recommendations and planning guidance for passwordless journey in the later section of this webinar. So let's see what are Microsoft's passwordless offerings in the next slide. When we talk about passwordless, we have three options that you can give to your organizations so that your users can keep their identity safe, your users have a better user experience and more choices to go passwordless. We will be covering each of these three methods, Windows Hello for Business, Microsoft Authenticator app, and FIDO2 security keys in detail over the next few slides. So Sean, can you tell us more about each of these authentication methods? I'd be happy to. So first off, we're going to start talking about Windows Hello. Windows Hello is Microsoft's premier passwordless experience for Windows 10. And you can see here on this slide that it's been available since 2016. And at this point, it's FIDO2 certified. And we have lots of organizations use it on millions of devices. Here on the next side, you'll see that we have two versions of Windows Hello. We have Hello for Consumers and Windows Hello for Business. And with both options, you can sign into either a PC or authenticate on the web with either biometrics, such as facial recognition, or using a fingerprint sensor. Or you can use a pen as another option. But Hello for Business is what we use for enterprise. It provides all of those things, plus additional security, PKI encryption, deployment policies that you can use to make it available to your end users, and security policies to control the pin complexity. 
What some organizations think that, well, if I just make my users use complex passwords, then that's sufficient security. But the, the main difference between using a password and using Windows Hello for Business and using a PIN that, that doesn't maybe have the same complexity as a password is that a PIN is a local credential, whereas a password is a centralized credential. So that's an important distinction to understand because if, a, if an attacker compromises your PIN and they figure out what your PIN is, they can't use it from anywhere like they can a password. The PIN is associated with that particular registered device, so it can only be used from that device, where a password can be used from anywhere. So that's why it's safer, actually, to use a local credential like a PIN or a local biometric that's validated on your registered device than to use a centralized credential like a password. But Windows Hello for Business is designated as a one-to-one -one credential meaning that it's really only meant to be used on a single device. So it's great for devices like your work PC or your laptop, something that you use individually each and every day as you go to work. But there are some limitations. You can only register up to 10 different Windows Hello for Business credentials on a single device. So for that reason, it's not really designed to be a many-to-many -many solution or for a shared device workplace where you come in and you might use a different device every day in, in the workplace. So, but we do have other options for the many, many scenario. And that's where we'll talk about our other options we have available for passwordless. And the next option here is using the Microsoft Passwordless Authenticator app. So just like using the Microsoft Authenticator for MFA, you can use the Authenticator app for passwordless authentication. This option has been available since 2018. And again, we have hundreds of thousands of users signing in using this method. When I used Microsoft Authenticator for passwordless, uh, I, I put in my username and I receive a push notification, similar to when I use it for multi-factor authentication. One difference, though, is that I don't have to put in my password first. And another difference is that when I receive the push notification, I'm going to be seeing one number on the screen, and then I'll see three numbers in the Authenticator app then I need to match the number that I see on the screen with the correct number that I see in my app. So in, the, in this example on the slide, you see that I, that I have numbers 67, 64, and 98. So if 64 is the number that I'm seeing on my screen, I'll tap 64 to approve that notification. And then on the authenticator, we will also then perform a biometric authentication using a facial recognition or a fingerprint recognition, or have the user enter a PIN. So in that case, they are entering two factors of authentication. They have the device in their possession, which is the first factor, and then they're using their PIN or their biometric as a second factor. So similar to Windows Hello for Business, we're using strong authentication in when we're using this option as well. Amey, why don't you talk to us about the third option and using FIDO security keys? Sure thing, John. For enterprises that use passwords today and have a shared PC environment, FIDO2 security keys provide a seamless way for workers to authenticate without entering a username or password. FIDO2 security keys also provide a great option for enterprises who are very security sensitive or have employees who aren't willing or able to use their phone as a second factor. In July 2019, we rolled out public preview for FIDO2 sign-in support for Azure AD joint devices and quickly heard from our customers that sign into hybrid Azure AD joint device using FIDO2 security keys and access to on-premise resources are essential. So earlier this year, we released public preview for FIDO2 support for hybrid environments. This means that organizations can now sign into hybrid Azure AD joint Windows 10 devices using a FIDO2 security key instead of a password and automatically get single sign-on to both on-premise and cloud resources. We have a lot of enterprises who have strongly expressed interest in adopting this solution. You can see, as of today, we already have 10,000 plus tenants that have enabled passwordless sign-in using FIDO2 security keys. So what is FIDO? FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online. And it's actually an organization made up of industry partners trying to solve passwordless problem. There are a lot of big names from different industries and verticals within FIDO, like Microsoft, Ubico, 
Google, Visa, and so on. All of them working together to figure out passwordless solutions. And by far, we think FIDO2 is the best one for addressing passwordless authentication. FIDO2 is an open standard for providing strong authentication and it leverages asymmetric key cryptography. FIDO2 is comprised of multiple standards that work together to enable stronger authentication. It has two important protocols that you need to be aware of. First is WebAuthn, which is Web Authentication Protocol. WebAuthn defines an API that enables development and implementation of strong passwordless authentication by web apps and services. With web authentication, users can sign in to online services with their face, fingerprint, pin, or portable FIDO2 security keys, leveraging strong public key credentials instead of passwords. This is what our solutions like Windows Hello for Business and FIDO keys also leverage. The second protocol is CTAP, uh, which is Client to Authenticator Protocol. The CTAP protocol enables external devices such as FIDO compliant security keys to work with WebAuthn and serve as authenticators. Currently, WebAuthn is supported in Microsoft Edge, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. And in order to do FIDO2, we recommend using Windows 10 March 2019 update. The testing is in progress for Mac and Chromebook integration. So hopefully very soon, you will be able to use FIDO2 security keys across these platforms as well. One of the reasons why we are so excited about FIDO2 security keys is that it's an open standard. So Microsoft has teamed up with leading hardware partners like Fatian Technologies, HID Global, Ubico, to make sure that we have a range of FIDO2 form factors available, including keys connecting via USB and NFC protocols, USB biometric keys, NFC badge, and biometric variables. Microsoft and industry partners have been working together on FIDO2 security devices for Windows Hello to enable easy and secure authentication on shared devices. So the open standard is truly allowing the innovation so that customers can really explore interesting use cases and find a security key that meets their needs accordingly. The article on this slide lists all different providers that offer FIDO2 security keys of different form factors that are known to be compatible with the passwordless experience. I encourage you to check out the article to learn more about the compatible provider. The next topic I want to cover is the secure authentication flow. We are really excited about the ability to do strong authentication in a very secure manner with all the three passwordless solutions that we covered. Windows Hello for Business, Authenticator app, and the FIDO2 device. So let's take a look at what's happening under the hood so you too can be excited about the user experience and also assured about the security design. The same simple pattern is used in all three different ways of performing passwordless sign-in. They're all based on asymmetric key cryptography. So it reduces the attack surface and there is nothing on the device for the attacker to steal. The private keys are always generated and stored in a secure element on the device locally. So on Windows PC, that's within TPM. Within FIDO keys, it's in the secure storage within the key itself. So the private key is always stored locally on the device. So to get access to those private keys to actually do the authentication flow, what we end up having to do is to provide a local gesture on that device. The local gesture could be your pin, your face, your fingerprint, or some other biometric. We use that gesture to get access to the private key, which is then used to get the user authenticated. So again, it's a very simple and secure solution that is used in all three passwordless technologies. I'm now going to transition to Sean, who will walk us through the next slides. All right, so IT organizations can choose which of these authentication methods are available for their end users. We provide flexible authentication management so that your IT administrators can go in and select which methods are available to which groups of users. So you can go in and enable them. You can choose which ones are available or not. 
and choose which users can use each of those methods that are enabled. One other option we're going to talk about that allows you to sign in without a password is the SMS sign-in. This has been available since April 2020 and is primarily designed for first-line workers. And in this case, instead of using a username and a password or one of these other passwordless mechanisms we've talked about, this allows a user to sign in with their phone number and receive a text message via with a one-time passcode in it. Now, it's important to note that this is different from the other passwordless mechanisms we've been talking about today in that this is not strong authentication. For all those other methods, as Amay just described, we have the security built in, so you have the registered device with you and use either a PIN or a biometric. In this case, this is just a single factor of authentication where you receive a one-time passcode via SMS. So why don't we transition to some demos now and we'll show you how an end user can sign in using these passwordless methods that we've been talking about. All right, for this first demo, I'm just gonna show signing into a web application using Windows Hello for Business. I've already signed into my computer using Windows Hello for Business, so I've opened a browser and in private mode so that I can get prompted for authentication again. So in this case, I'm just going to go into the Azure AD portal. I'll provide my username. And then I'm going to be prompted to confirm my Windows Hello for Business credential by touching my fingerprint sensor that's on my laptop. So I have simply scanned my fingerprint and that's it, I'm signed in. It's now getting me into the portal. All I had to do was provide my username and touch my fingerprint sensor. You notice I didn't have to provide a password at all. And normally after I've signed into my machine with Windows Hello for Business, I get single sign on to my browser and other applications anyway. So I don't even have to do that a second time in most cases. So that was really easy as an end user to use. And it was also secure and it used two factors of authentication. It used my device the, and specifically the key that's stored in the TPM of my device and used my biometric as a second factor of authentication. For the second demo, I'm going to show signing into the same website using the passwordless authenticator app option. So let me just sign out. And then I'm gonna sign right back in. I'll select my user. But in this case, it sends me a push notification. And you can see that I see number 73 on my screen. On my mobile device, I've received the push notification and I see the numbers 73, 71, and 91. So of course I need to match what I see on my screen and I will tap 73. Then my phone does a facial recognition authentication as well for the second factor, and then that's it. So again, it'll complete the sign-in, and I am now signed into the portal without using my password, and it was really easy, and it was secure using two factors of authentication. In this case, my mobile device and my face ID recognition. All right, for the last demo, let me go ahead and open up another browser here. And again, I'm going to go sign into the Azure AD portal. But in this case, I'm going to use a FIDO2 security key. So let me sign in with this account here. And it's, it wants to sign me in using a security key. So I'm going, to, I'm going to put that security key into my USB port. And in this case, it prompts me to touch my security key because it's a security key that happens to have a fingerprint sensor on it. So I touch it. It validates my fingerprint, and that's it. Now it's signing me in. So again, a very easy option for me as an end user. All I had to do was plug in my security key, touch it, and that's it. Didn't have to use a password. I didn't have to do anything complicated. It was really easy to use as an end user and very secure. So I just showed you three different ways that an end user can sign in. All three options were very easy. You, you noticed it only took a few minutes to show all three of those options. And, and that's it for the end user demos. There is one other thing I wanna show you from the administrator side. Now that I'm in the Azure Active Directory portal, I'll show you the, the, the administrator can go into Azure Active Directory, scroll down and select security. And then I will select authentication methods. This is where your administrators can manage the authentication methods that are available for your end users. We covered this a little bit in one of the slides. 
But you can see here, if I click on the FIDO2 security method, I can manage this method. I can choose whether it's enabled or not and which users this method is enabled for. And you'll see that I have the same option for Microsoft Authenticator to enable it and which users that, that are targeted for this method. And then lastly, text message, which we talked about earlier as being a passwordless method, but not a strong authentication method. So it's primarily used for first line workers that need an easy way to sign in with just their phone number and receiving a text message. So it's really easy for your administrators to come in here and to choose which methods are enabled for your users and to get it set up and get started. All right, so that concludes the demos. Now let's conclude the presentation. I'm sure after learning about all these exciting passwordless options, you may have a lot of open questions and it could seem like a daunting journey. Passwordless authentication is already here and going to become even more prominent in future. Therefore, we recommend all of you to start planning for this change and reduce your organization's dependencies on passwords. This is where the following roadmap on how to go passwordless comes handy. It's based on several years of research, investigation, and customer conversations. What we recommend to get started with this journey is to enable MFA. MFA, even if it leverages passwords, it's protecting resources and getting users into the habit of realizing that a password alone is not enough. This is a prerequisite to enable passwordless. When we think about our first step towards passwordless, we need to make sure that we enable that combined registration process in the Azure portal. This is a service that allows the users to register MFA and self-service password reset and it's an on and off button that you can target for a specific set of users. Then we want you to start thinking about the conditional access policy that's going to trigger the MFA for your users only when necessary, say, when accessing sensitive apps. And then start thinking about how you enroll your apps and devices into your conditional access policies. The second aspect of this journey is getting to true single sign-on. And the first thing we recommend doing is start getting your apps onto Azure AD. That's the only way you can take advantage of all of these sign-in methods is to use Azure Active Directory as your central control plane. So that's important to, not, to get your apps onto Azure AD. So any new apps that you start using, you should put those onto Azure AD instead of any legacy identity providers. And then you should start migrating any existing apps that are on other identity providers like ADFS to Azure Active Directory. We have our app gallery there that allows you to easily add applications from the gallery. You can also add non-gallery SaaS applications to your directory and use those for single sign-on. The second step is that you can publish Windows integrated authentication apps using Azure AD Application Proxy. This allows you to take legacy apps that are running on-premises and use Azure Active Directory as your control plane so that users have to sign in and succeed with authentication in Azure Active Directory with, if they're outside the network to then gain access to these on-premises applications. Those are applications that typically use things like Kerberos, LDAP, and other legacy protocols. But with the application proxy, you can publish them and make them available. So you have to perform authentication with Azure Active Directory first, and then gain access to those applications. We also have partnerships in place called Secure Hybrid Authentication where we partnered with devices with platform companies like F5, Akamai, Citrix, and Zscaler, where you can use those appliances. And those appliances will protect access to those legacy applications and require that the user perform authentication with Azure Active Directory first and then get access to the applications. Later, we recommend that you also migrate your line of business applications, your custom apps to Azure Active Directory. You can use SAML applications or OpenID Connect and OAuth applications. You can register those line of business applications with your directory and use Azure AD to control the sign into those applications. And then lastly, it's time to then sunset or get rid of those older protocol applications. So part of that is app modernization and that could take a long time. And in that process, you have to identify what apps are being used, whether you have source code or not, who owns the applications, are they first party or third party applications? And that's all part of the journey to decide what can be upgraded, what can be sunset, what can be retired, replaced. That's all part of this journey. 
But once you get all your applications onto Azure AD, that really helps you to use these passwordless methods for signing into any applications that your users use. Next, we would love for you to start thinking about deploying Windows Hello for Business. As we saw earlier, this was released in 2016. And so if you're not running Windows 10, please at least think about how you get to the first version of Windows 10 that has Windows Hello for Business. As we already looked at the step one, you need MFA in order to set up Windows Hello for Business. So do enable multi-factor authentication to provide additional protection and enable self-service password reset in the event users need to fall back on a password. Then start thinking about the user journey over the next year on how you get this out to your users and what hardware you need in place. We recommend that you roll out Windows Hello for Business to users, even with a basic option like PIN, to get them into the habit of not using passwords. Finally, Windows 10 supports a wide range of devices, from small embedded devices, traditional notebooks, to large servers. Authentication options using biometrics like face or fingerprint could allow for a more user-friendlier option and therefore more sustainable in the long term. And now as we look at enabling passwordless authentication for your users, the first thing we recommend doing is enabling the Authenticator app for those users. Then this gives them the option then to use passwordless sign-in using the Microsoft Authenticator app with any device that they have, whether that be a Windows device or a non-Windows device. And then as you look a little bit later in the next few months, you can start looking at the FIDO2 security keys and start piloting those so you can get ready for those and make those available to your users that might need to use those security keys that don't have access to other options. To do that, you'll also want to make sure that you're on an appropriate version of Windows 10. We recommend version 1903 or higher, especially if you're using Azure AD joint devices. And as we talked about earlier, if you're going to use FIDO devices in a hybrid environment, for hybrid joint devices, then you need to actually be on Windows 10 version 20H1, which is the 2004 version or higher. So then they can use their FIDO keys to sign into those Windows 10 devices. And then as you go on, explore other form factors for FIDO 2. What else is going to work for your users? What are what works best for them? And as you look at all these options, you'll figure out what's best for each different population of users that you have in your organization. Throughout this session, we've been telling you that passwords are terrible and everyone hates them, but they're still going to be around for some time. So please make sure that your password hygiene is as good as it can possibly be. So we recommend rolling out Azure AD protection if you have that capability. Azure AD password protection protects your organization by detecting and blocking weak or breach credentials. We also recommend checking out password guidance provided by Microsoft to enforce correct password policies within your organization. As users stop using passwords, they will start forgetting passwords more often. This is where SSPR, which is self-service password reset, comes handy. It enables users to quickly get unblocked without administrator intervention and continue working no matter where they are. By allowing users to unblock themselves, your organization can reduce the non-productive time and high support costs for most password-related issues. When you're comfortable with the process and can communicate the requirements with a broader set of users, you can select additional groups of users to enable for SSPR, or you can enable SSPR for everyone in Azure AD Tenant. We hope this roadmap encourages a cultural shift within your organization by getting users comfortable with the idea of never typing, changing, or even knowing a password going forward. Besides these, looking at these elements in your planning, there are a few other aspects you should consider as well. First off is the persona. You're going to have different types of users in your organization, and you need to plan which passwordless options are best for each of those types of users. Second, you also need to consider the different platforms you use in your organization. Are people using Windows 10 devices? Are they using Macs? Are they using browser? Are they using mobile devices? Those are all things you need to take into consideration as you make your plans for going to passwordless. And then the last thing are the types of apps that are being used in your organization. 
Again, we need to get single sign-on into your organization with Azure Active Directory. So you need to look at what SaaS apps, what web apps, what legacy apps you have, what mobile apps you have in your organization. And understanding these different planning aspects are crucial for going through that journey to passwordless. Finally, these are some fantastic resources you can refer to learn more about how to go passwordless. ak.ms slash go passwordless will take you to a white paper that has tons of quality guidance uh, around each passwordless option. And it also includes guidance to convince business decision makers on passwordless benefits. Similarly, we have a bunch of deployment plans for MFA, single sign-on, uh, Windows Hello for Business available at the Azure AD deployment plan link. Then we also have how to videos that I strongly recommend referring to to learn more about passwordless and other Azure AD benefits. And finally, we have also included a link to web authentication API that you can use for applications and SDKs in conjunction with web authentication. Thanks for taking the time to watch this webinar. We hope it was useful as you learn about passwordless and the solutions that Microsoft has in this space and that it helps you to get started on that passwordless journey. So take the journey, get started, and good luck with it.